Hey everyone, today we'll be reviewing this discontinued Mars Hydro Grow Light controller and in the process explain why these telephone line and ethernet line ports on your grow lights are mostly useless. So let's say you bought a brand new grow light and along with the list of features comes this line about it being controllable with the grow light controller. So you think, oh wow, with this nifty feature, I can just pick up grow light controller from the same manufacturer and automate all of my lights, right? Well, no, cause at least for most of you, this port's going to be useless. That's because most of the grow light manufacturers that include these phone line or ethernet line controls don't sell a grow light controller for their lights, which might be okay if, you know, these lights can be controlled by other manufacturers controllers. But the secret no lighting manufacturer wants to tell you is that even though all of these lights are controlled with the same cables, Apparently, there is absolutely no standard for how these can be controlled. So even if you do get another manufacturer's grow light controller that plugs into this port, there is a good chance it won't even work. But let's take a step back to see just how we got here. This is the GSI-1 grow light controller and is the very first grow light controller I've owned because it was needed to adjust the custom LED spectrums of this kind X2 light. I've never owned an LED grow light controller before this because, well, there just really wasn't a common one available on the market, which in hindsight is super weird considering just how many lights have this connection port. But I digress. When I got this controller for $300, by the way, I tried it with a couple other lights I owned that also has this RJ11 phone line port, and it turns out none of them worked with this controller. So I was like, this is weird, but I guess it's because this is a special controller made specifically for a light. But then if that's the case, why did they choose the same connection port as all these other lights on the market? And yeah, I sort of just forgot about it. Until a couple months later, I saw this on the market for 150 bucks, and was like, holy shit. Finally, I can get a somewhat affordable grow light controller to play around with for all of these lights that I own. And worst case scenario, at least it'll work with my Mars Hydro lights, which I have a couple of, right? Oh, how wrong I was, because when I got it, the first thing I did, obviously, was plug it into my Mars Hydro light. And it does nothing. Let's try another Mars Hydro light. and nothing. At this point, I'm thinking this controller must be defective because how the fuck, as a major grow lighting company, can you make your grow light controller not work with your own lights, right? But I have this atrium light lying around, so let's just plug it in and oh shit, it works. But wait, I can brighten the light, but I can't fully turn off the light. So the controller isn't broken. It just can't control things very well. And so came the tests. One by one, I tested this controller with the lights I had on hand. And in the end, it fully worked for about half of the LED lights I owned, as in I can turn it to max brightness and off completely. 
Some lights I had partial control, like the atrium light, and some lights it just did nothing for. So now with access to the new Vivo Sun controller as well, I had a third grow light controller that I can use the RJ11 port to do more tests with. But unfortunately, this controller was similar to a GSI-1 in that it didn't work with any other grow light I tried it with. And I had high hopes for this controller too because at $100, it finally looked like a reasonable option I might be able to recommend. Like, why make it an RJ11 port if you're going to make it not compatible with the rest of the market? At least change it to something else so people aren't tricked into buying this controller just to find out it does nothing. So yeah, it seems like even though all these new grow lights on the market uses this telephone line port for controls, there's absolutely no standard for how they're controlled. I mean, there are a large number of lights with a similar overlapping standard, as about half of my lights were controllable through Lamar's hydro controller. But at $150 for a 50-50 chance of your lights working with it, there's absolutely no reason for anyone to get one of these things over a mechanical timer or a smart plug, unless you have a very specialized light, like the Kind X2, that requires a paired controller to unlock the light's full functionality. I have no clue why all of these LED grow light companies insist on adding this port to their lights when most of them won't even make an affordable controller themselves to utilize it. Or worse, sell a controller that isn't compatible with their own lighting standards. Which, by the way, looks to be completely discontinued now. So I guess they finally tried it on their own lights and realized it doesn't work? But until there's a standard out there, I would suggest not bothering with this port, unless the light manufacturer sells a controller made specifically for it. And even then, all these are just so expensive when compared with something like a smart plug. The only lighting controller I've tried that seems to be somewhat worth it is the Controller 69, which is pretty cheap with a ton of advanced features that a smart plug can't replicate. And it uses its own proprietary port, so there's no confusion on what it works with. But yeah, this is something that's been bothering me for a while now especially because there's no way for the average grower to figure this out on their own without access to a bunch of grow lights and controllers. So hopefully this sheds some light on this topic and will help people make a more informed decision when choosing a grow light to buy. And that's it for now.